Mineralfunds.com, we have a report. Uh, we, 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 one of the things that we do is we research the world's metal and mining ETFs. So as of July 2024, there are 220 metal and mining ETFs worldwide with $330 billion in assets. Quarterly, we publish a report on these ETFs and we cover three aspects of developments in the ETF, in this ETF market. First is uh, new issues. So we talk about new ETFs that have been launched in, in the quarter. Uh, and uh, we also discuss any that have been closed. Uh, the second thing that we discuss is uh, performance, performance of the ETFs, of these 220 ETFs. And then the, the, the last thing that we discuss is perhaps the most significant is funds flows. We look at how money is being directed within this realm. There's $330 billion in 220 metal and mining ETFs worldwide. Uh, the first ETF was GLD, introduced in November 2004. And now in 2024, this market's grown to 220 ETFs with $330 billion. 80% of that is metal ETFs. So gold, silver, platinum group metals, base metals, uh, the, the copper, the nickel, zinc, and uh, <clears throat> uranium metal ETFs. Metal ETFs represent 80% of the assets in the metal and mining ETFs. A further 12% is represented by mining company ETFs. So the junior silver, junior golds, uh, the golds, silver, and the battery metal uh, ETFs, battery metal company, mining company ETFs that have been launched. That's a further 12%. And the last 8%, is hedged uh, and leveraged metal and mining ETFs. So the two times uh, silver bull, the, the inverse silver, inverse metal ETFs. Um, and um, the biggest component of that is currency hedged gold ETFs. There's 70 gold ETFs uh, uh, is the largest single category uh, worldwide with some $200 billion in assets. So the first thing that we look at is the new issues in the ETF market. In the first half of 2024, there were three new issues. Sprott launched two copper funds. There was the Physical Copper Trust and the Copper Miners ETF. So that's a play on, uh, on the requirements for copper in the energy transition. And um, um, there's been two since the end of June, actually in the first few weeks of July this year by Dynamic. I'll get to those in a second. They're obviously part for a subsequent report, but the most interesting development in terms of new ETFs was the China Asset Management Corporation uh, Gold Industry Equity ETF. So this, this equity, this gold equity, gold company equity ETF was launched in China in January, 2024. And it's significant for at least two reasons. One, it invests in Zijin mining, but also Western and ex mining companies external to China, such as Barrick, Newmont, Australian companies, and, and uh, those listed in overseas markets. That's principally invest in gold equity mining companies internationally. So that was of interest. And also is the fact that we see immediately six further asset management companies requesting permission to launch similar products. So this could portend a great deal of interest in gold equity, uh, gold equity mining ETFs from the Chinese domestic market. And just for a comparison to of what this may may represent, um, there are seventy gold metal ETFs worldwide today. Sixteen over a quarter, and the biggest number in a single market exist in China. Uh, so if there's a, if there's a now interest in developing gold equity. Mining ETFs, there could be uh, significant growth in that sector with capital being allocated to the companies that are underlying uh, those ETFs uh, uh, accordingly. So that was a very interesting development. There was one closure, Dacheng Shanghai Gold ETF. Uh, there were 17 gold, Chinese gold ETFs at the end of December 2023. The smallest of those closed just was not able to support uh, significant new capital additions. Um, and so um, um, it closed in the, in the first half of 2024, uh, uh, a, a very small Chinese gold ETF. Um, there, there have been two, two new ETFs since the beginning of July, uh, since July in the last few weeks. Uh, Dynamic in Canada offered to launch two products, an active goal, global gold uh, 
ETF and an active mining opportunities ETF. And as I mentioned, so we're, we're, that brings the total to 220 ETFs worldwide with 330 billion US dollars in assets. So th that's the summary of uh, new issues, launches, um, and closure. The, the performance kind of breaks down in the first half of 2024. Gold price rallied 10%, but silver price rallied almost 20%. The best performing ETF worldwide of the 220 metal and mining ETFs in the first half of 2024 was Wisdom Tree Silver Bull two times. And it rallied almost 40%, as it should is expected to do, given that silver price was up almost 20%. The worst performing ETF of 220 worldwide was the silver ultra short, it was the pro shares ultra short silver negative one times at minus 37%, which also is expected. It's you, to be short silver in a rallying silver market can provide a negative return, and it provided a dramatically negative return. So silver was the outstanding, uh, most volatile ETF, silver metal ETF, and the inverse leverage metal ETF during the first half of 2024. The, um, the gold ETFs, they're interesting. There's 70 unhedged gold ETFs worldwide. Two are in Japan. They provided the best performance amongst the universe of gold ETFs. And the reason was currency depreciation. So the two gold ETFs in Japan are Japan Physical Gold ETF and Nomura Japan Gold Share Linked ETF. Th this ETF, uh, these ETFs uh, provided returns in the first half of 2024 of almost 28%. Gold price was up 10% in US dollars, but Japanese yen was depreciating. And so they experienced outsized returns. In 2023, the Turkish Lira gold ETF was the most uh, was the highest performer uh, because the Turkish Lira itself was depreciating dramatically. So um, we look at the unhedged gold ETFs and it provides us significant information about currency markets um, and the protection provided for gold investors in various currency markets. And so, as mentioned, the, the two best uh, performing unhedged gold ETFs were, were in Japan. Um, so that's a kind of a, a brief summary of performance. The most interesting part of the analysis uh, entails funds flow analysis. So what we do is we review the um, we review the 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 transfer of shares uh, from 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 ETFs uh, and and uh, the increase or decreasing in number of issued shares. When a, when a, when an investor buys an ETF, a new share is issued from the transfer agent and, and metal, underlying metal is secured against that purchase. When an, when an investor sells an ETF, those shares are redeemed back to the transfer agent and the metal is freed. So, so there's a great deal of information that can be attained by looking at the number of issued shares in an ETF directly from the transfer agent. So what we've seen is we see the five largest gold ETFs in the West, two in the US, two in the UK, one in uh, Germany, Spider Gold Shares, iShares Gold Trust in the US, Invesco Physical Gold ETC and iShares Physical Gold ETC in the UK, and Exetra Gold. Uh, total, in total, representing almost 150 billion US dollars. Gold price rallied 10% in the first half of 2024, but all five of those ETFs had a fewer number of shares outstanding at the end of the first half than they had at the beginning. And that means redemptions. That means that the underlying shareholders were redeeming their units. We see exactly the opposite happening in Asia. So the five largest uh, ETFs in, in Eastern capital markets are Japan Physical Gold ETF, the Hunan Yifu uh, China Gold ETF, Nippon India Gold ETF, and then two further China ETFs, Bocera Gold and Efun Gold. So three in China, one in Japan, uh, one in India, and three in China. All five of those gold ETFs had substantial returns but also increases in units outstanding, meaning net purchases. So what we're seeing there is evidence of gold accumulation in Eastern financial markets. Uh, we're talking about Tokyo, uh, uh, Mumbai, Singapore, and uh, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Shanghai, and, and Hong Kong are where the Chinese ones trade, and, and uh, divestment from gold ETS in Western financial centers. So a transfer of gold from West to East. We see a similar pattern in silver, in the first half of 2024, and we see significant underrepresentation also in the platinum group metals with redemptions. So um, the funds flow analysis gives us uh, strategic information about the movement of capital and gold, more importantly, gold, silver, and the metals, the underlying metals 
from the different jurisdictions worldwide. In aggregate, again, we're looking at 220 ETFs and $330 billion. So we see price information, performance information, and funds flow information. So the, um, the, the summary of this can be kind of categorized as ETFs began 2004. By 2024, there's 220 ETFs. This is metal and mining ETFs. And um, they've accumulated tremendous uh, uh, volumes of capital, 330 billion US dollars. By comparison, the metal, the gold and, and specialist metal managed funds uh, have about three, 30 billion US dollars in capital, meaning the ETF market is 10 times bigger. And 80% of that is metal, metal and uh, 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 just underlying metal uh, ETFs. So in aggregate, there's been this capital that's been allocated to ETFs has come to some extent at the at, at the expense of allocations to managed funds and to junior mining and exploration and development companies. And so the demand side has been uh, pushed by new demand for the metals by the uh, by the purchase of metal ETFs. But the supply the supply side has not been assisted by the application of capital towards exploration and development, which is a trend that we see potentially reversing and it's created some very dramatic outsized market uh, um, opportunities. Um, so in final conclusion, it's the ETF funds flow analysis, performance and funds flow analysis that gives us the highest intelligence uh, insight into how money is moving in gold, silver, and the underlying metals are moving. And we operate uh, by reviewing uh, issued shares, performance characteristics for 220 metal and mining ETFs worldwide, uh, which today, in July of 2024, comprises over 330 billion US dollars of, of assets globally.